<laughs> this is Infants on Thrones. The philosophies of men mingled with humor. We are the core. So I have these scenes here that I want to read from your book and um, hopefully we can assign parts and do them. I think for the first scene, if I could request that, that Jake be me and that Randy play the bishop. All right. Because <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I, play, I play good. Yes. It's not a stretch. <laughs> right. Okay. We, we bring Randy. He's best <laughs> we have. Yes, he's good. He's, he's good. He's good. Um, all right. All right. Do, it in that, do it in that accent too. <laughs> My new bishop carefully explained to me how not to be a homosexual. You can start by lowering your voice and change the way you walk. Man walk, men walk tall and proud, head up, shoulders out. You need a different haircut too, that's part of the repentance <laughs> process. If you start acting like a real man, you'll become a real man. Don't you worry about a thing, I'm gonna help you. And the Lord is gonna help. And we're going to find you a wife. This semester even. How does that sound? <laughs> Awful. Terrible. It's like he's selling him a Volvo. We're going to get you a wife. I tell you what, we're going to walk out of here. What can I, t- what can it- I turn that yeah. no into yes? <laughs> What's, what does it take for me to get you into a Volvo today? <laughs> into a Volvo, actually. Isn't it? And see. How was your date? It was fun. Did you schedule a second date? No, but she said she would help me make a quilt for one of my art classes. <laughs> Are you sure that art is the best major for someone like you? A lot of homosexuals do art and theater, so you might be surrounding yourself with the wrong kind of influence. <laughs> Can I major in football, please? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, academic vice president, technically we can expel you. According to this, I should expel you. By engaging in homosexual behavior, you have violated the honor code of Brigham Young University, which you signed voluntarily. Your actions show you to be an overt threat to the rest of the student body and the integrity of this university. So the rules are clear. I should expel you and freeze your transcripts. We'll call that option A. And if I go somewhere else, maybe I could get into Ohio State before next semester. Your credits will not transfer. I begin to panic, my heart beating wildly inside my chest. Three years of hard work erased forever. I would fail to graduate and my life would be ruined all because I fooled around with a guy on campus. However, let's explore option B. It seems like you're a pretty good student, mostly A's. And this is your first offense? You've never done this sort of thing before? No. (laughs) <laughs> uh, that, that was my that was that was uh our artistic and uh interpretation yeah. no yeah. i don't know i mean what was what had you ever done anything i like the before? first one no i, I mean I, right. I, I this is this is all true okay all this right is, all right this is uh yeah all right, all right. You, see, you see andrew you're not gay you don't look gay and you don't act gay you're simply confused you don't know who you really are But this other boy, he's a ballet dancer, and he has a history. He wanted to recruit you into this lifestyle of sin. And if that is the case, which I think it is, then my job is to protect you from his influence. The man was dead wrong. Doug was the discreet guy who kept saying no. I was the one who threw caution to the wind. When your parents sent you here, Andrew, they did not expect you to encounter predators and homosexuals. They sent you here for an education in a spiritual environment. My job is to promote that kind of atmosphere for every student. So let me tell you what you're going to do. First, you will attend reparative therapy. We have a whole team of professionals who've been quite successful in correcting same-sex attraction. Because you've acted out on your homosexual feelings, you are ineligible for group therapy. You pose too great a risk to others. But I've already recommended you for one-on-one treatment. I already knew the place. The Nelliest gays had to go there several times a week. 
Most of them knew, told me how they hooked up with other guys they met in group, but they also told me horror stories, how students were shown retro gay porn and made to throw up, or worse, shocked with electrodes attached to their penis or scrotum. I personally knew enrolled students who, by their own choice, had undergone such treatments. Next. Mm. Next. You will stop all contact with homosexual persons. You are forbidden from associating with any of them. We will be watching you closely, including your university email account. Any communication with known homosexuals, and we'll go back to option A. Got it? Finally, you must write down a list of names of each and every homosexual you know on campus. If there's some kind of gay underground movement, then we need to end it immediately. You will write them down now, and I expect a full list. That is option B. We expel you, or else you cooperate. You are free to choose. And then you go to somewhere far more liberal, off mm. to Oxford, and we're going to yeah. read it. Okay. In a British accent, Jacob. Oh, all right, all right. How are you doing, Brother Evans? <laughs> Fine. Today was good. That's great to hear. So, that thing we discussed a while back, what you told me about how you're gay, you know, I think that's fine. You told me what happened to BYU. I think it's I think it's so funny that they may tried to make you change. <laughs> anyway, the stake president asked me to <clears throat> check in with the area presidency. In turn, they thought it best to check in with the leadership in Salt Lake. So our confidential chat had not been so confidential. I know I told you this was just your nature, but the brethren are <clears throat> very concerned your feelings are not simply for men, but perhaps for children too. Do you <laughs> feel sexually attracted to children? I need to know. No. I'm not a pedophile. Not even once? <laughs> <laughs> and you've never had those kinds of feelings for children? No! I've never been attracted to children that way. I am gay, which means I like Men, adult men. And like I've told you, I have a partner. Of course, I know you're not a threat, but I have to check because of the brethren. You understand that I have to release you from your calling. It's not my choice, but the area president said that either way, we can't have you around children. It just looks bad. I'm sorry, Andrew, but I have to look out for everybody in the ward. Oh, God. All right, sorry. Uh, Boyd K. Packer was a huge influence in my dad's life. Huge. So tell us who you want to read Boyd K. Packer slash your dad. Um, I want you, Heather. I, I, I like uh, mixing gender roles here. You can be my dad and Randy, you can be me. Don't ever make me sit with you and Brian in public. I want to spend time with you, but I do not want to give even the slightest impression that I approve of what you're doing. Dad, the only impression you give is that you were having lunch with your son. You have free agency, which means you are free to destroy your own reputation. But I am a high priest in the church. I choose to live by a certain standard. Every day I strive to set an example and to live a Christ-like life. You may think this is fine now, but what are you going to do a year from now? America is not like Oxford. I can tell you now nobody's going to want you as a neighbor. If a pair of homosexuals moved onto my street, I'd be grabbing my kids and getting out of there so fast. And let's be honest, Andrew, you'll never get a job, ever. You think any respectable company is going to hire a homosexual? Forget about ever working for the federal government. <laughs> oh my God. This happened? This happened. All right. On to the court of love. Oh boy. Which you... How many characters do we have here? We have, we have we a role have for everyone here. So, um... I'm going to be the Bush appointee because you asked me to be. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Go. This is like therapy. Mm -hmm. This is serious Action. therapy for me. Yeah. <laughs> Playing the role of the guy that excommunicated me. Wow. Who was, yeah. a, who was a real douchebag, by the way. So I've just got to channel my inner douchebag. So the scriptures are pretty clear on this issue. You betrayed the church, your family and God. You betrayed all those people you served in Ukraine. What about that woman you could have married and the children you could have fathered who are now stuck in heaven without physical bodies or a chance to come to earth? 
You've caused enormous pain to your family, brought humiliation upon your parents, and set a bad example for the church. Are you not ashamed? Do you believe in God? Do you believe Joseph Smith was a prophet of God? Do you have a testimony of the church? Yes, my testimony of the gospel is the only reason I'm sitting here tonight. I underwent a full year of reparative therapy at BYU, but I could not marry a woman. That would be deceitful. Oh, but you can marry a woman. You should. Trust me, I'm a gynecologist. I know more about these things than you do. God made men and women to fit together. <laughs> in, in all fairness, God made men and men to fit together as well. Right. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't correct him on that. Uh, this is going to be a hard one for me to read. I'll, I'll do my best. Do you ever masturbate? If so, how often? Do you have sexual relations with any other men? What exactly is the nature of your relationship with Brian? Do you share a bed? Excuse me, but this is really none of your business. Oh, but it is our business. As leaders in this church, it is our duty to determine how repentant you are. And right now, you are not being very cooperative, Brother Evans. In fact, you're acting a little cocky. Aha, uh-huh, pun intended. Mm. <laughs> I don't Double think entendre. it. <laughs> Sorry. You, th- you, that, you think he was going for that? He's like, get it. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> my sex life is between me and my partner. And besides, that's not the real issue here, is it? What do you mean? If you're engaging in homosexual behavior, then you are violating your covenants and should be disciplined. Maybe. But there are plenty of gay Mormons having sex in this city who are not facing disciplinary councils. The only reason I have been called in is because I am living openly as a gay man in a long-term relationship at the height of the national debate on same-sex marriage, which the church opposes. This is a political issue, not a religious one. Other members struggle with this same affliction, yeah. But if they come to us and confess their sins and repent, then we do not discipline them. It's only those like you who are confused and think somehow that what you're doing is not a sin. You are damaging the reputation of the church. Let me be clear with you. We're asking you to leave this man... Brian? Yes, if that's his name. If you leave him and come back into the fold and repent, then you can be forgiven. It's that easy. Essentially, the choice is up to you. What if I asked you to leave your wife? If you were forced to pick between your wife and the church, which would you choose? Which do you think that she would choose? But I am married, and you are not. My relationship is validated by God, by nature, and the government. You're absolutely right. For now, and I know that you don't want, you did not see it this way, but Brian is my husband, and we intend to spend the rest of our lives together. Marriage is the union of a man and a woman only. Because he slammed the table then, so I'm slamming the table. Oh, wow. Yeah. Marriage is the union of a man and a woman only. Once the federal marriage amendment passes, you will be outlawed by the Constitution of the United States. What will you do then? I'm not like your bishop in England who just let you get away with it. We're not a bunch of liberals here. We obey God's law. Do you understand that you are violating God's law? Do you? I believe God made me this way for a reason. I believe God led me to Brian. I know that I'm supposed to be with him and I believe God wants me to be honest with myself. Well then, anything else you think we need to add, brethren? I just want to remind you, Brother Evans, that we have nothing against your per- against you personally. We love you, and we are here to help you regain your path to your Heavenly Father. We are not here to judge you. That's why we call it a court of love, because everything is done with the Spirit of the Lord present. I hope you have felt that spirit that I have felt here tonight. I mean, my God, was he in the same room? Okay, two hours later. After much discussion and prayer, we've reached a unanimous decision. Brother Evans, it is hereby decided that you be excommunicated from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Is there anything else you would like to say for the record? Yes. Gordon B. Hinckley has stated very plainly that he loves the gay and lesbian members. And he also said that there's a place for us in the church. He is a prophet, so what he says is true. And that is my final question to you. That is what I'm curious to know. Where is my place? Where is my place in the church? church. To hear this interview in its entirety, visit us at www.infantsonthrones.com. And if you appreciate this video and would like to see more, 
please consider supporting us on Patreon, www.patreon.com forward slash infants. Thank you for listening to Infants on Thrones. Infants on Thrones.